men, including physicians, are horrible informants. And what I mean is they are not very good recorders of their own health history. That is why we use tools to help us decide what is really going on with a man's urinary difficulties. In this video, I'm going to talk about one particular tool that we use, and that is called the Euroflow. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist at Sunrise Urology here in Gilbert, Arizona. A lot of my patients come in with urinary difficulties, especially men. And when they come in, these older men in their 60s, they come in with urinary difficulties. Most of the time, it's due to an enlarged prostate. When they first come in, we ask about their urinary symptoms. How badly does it bother him? And how long has, been going, has it been going on, etc.? One of the things that we check is the ability of the man to actually void. And how this particular device works is called the Euroflow machine. We have a Bluetooth connected device in which the patient comes in with a full bladder and he voids into this machine. What this machine will then do is record how fast urine is coming out, how long it took for him to void that amount, and also it'll plot these numbers uh, against a nomogram, which kind of indicates how badly are his urinary symptoms. I'm going to show you an example of a Euroflow from a gentleman recently who was here at the office. He was in his mid-60s, and he was complaining of urinary difficulties. Not Has not been treated. Interestingly, when I, when I inquired about how badly he, he was urinating, he said, I barely have any problems. And it was his urination was completely not bothersome to him at all. He was perfectly fine with his urination. When I had him come in with a full bladder and he voided into the machine, I get a noble, I get a report, a Euroflow report looking something like this. On top, you have the flow pattern and how long it took for him to void. On the bottom left is the average flow rate plotted against the nomogram and also the maximum flow rate on the lower right plotted against a nomogram. So he came in, he voided into the machine, the machine transferred it, recorded this electronically and then transferred it over to a PDF. So we're not killing any trees. We don't have to print anything out. It automatically is saved onto an electronic device on a server and I am able to recall that, and that's how I'm looking at that piece of document. So if you look carefully at the top part, which is the Euroflow, you will see this squig squiggly line. On the vertical axis is how fast urine is flowing out of the patient. That's the, the velocity measured in milliliters per second, how many cc's per second urine is flowing out of the patient. On the horizontal axis, it's time in seconds. So in this gentleman, it didn't really take him too long to void this amount. So it took about 30 seconds. If you notice the, the pattern of the, of the squiggly line, it is not a big smooth peak at the very beginning and then it tapers off. That, is, that would be a normal flow pattern. This gentleman had what we call an obstructive voiding pattern, meaning there's something blocking his urine flow which leads to this jagged line. It is, it is not supposed to be a jagged line. It should be a nice smooth flow coming out of the bladder. But in this case, it was not. If you look carefully at the nomogram on the lower left-hand corner of that bigger image that I showed you earlier, the average flow rate was actually in that dark shaded greenish area and classification was obstructed, meaning it is indicating that the average flow rate is so slow that it is typically indicative of a man who has an obstructive voiding pattern. So despite this gentleman in his 60s who said he was voiding perfectly okay, his flow study says otherwise. So we trust, but we verify. And how we verify, one of the ways that we verify is through this Euroflow study, completely non-invasive, we don't have to put anything inside the patient, but it gives me a lot of information. I corroborate what the patient reports with the objective data. In this case, they do not mesh, they do not match, and they don't corroborate. So something is awry, there's discrepancy, and warrants further investigation. So having lived in St. Louis, the Midwest, Missouri, for many, many years during training, I trust 
but I verify. All right, the show me state. I trust, but verify. All right, do you, if you guys have any questions about urination, urinary avoiding difficulties, evaluation for men with enlarged prostates, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And I look forward to hearing from you here in the future. Bye-bye.